Welcome to worship at St. Philip Lutheran Church here in Dublin, California. We are celebrating Easter still. We are in the sixth Sunday of Easter. It is uh, uh, one more Sunday that we will be saying that actually we celebrate the resurrection each and every uh, Sunday of, of the year. But it's these Sundays of Easter that we put that special emphasis and we we uh, say quite often, he is risen, he is risen indeed, alleluia. Well, let us begin our worship then this morning by singing our opening hymn. Hallelujah. Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and might be to our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We confess our sins. Jesus Christ was the first to conquer death the ruler of all the kings of the earth. He loves us, and by his blood he sets us free from our sins. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Take a moment for self-reflection. Most merciful God, we confess to you that we are dead in trespasses and sins. We have forgotten your promises and forsaken your will. In your great mercy, deliver us from the death we deserve for the sake of Jesus Christ. And now the absolution. 
Christ was handed over for our trespasses and was raised for our justification. In him we have forgiveness, and life, and resurrection from the dead. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from death dwells in you, then he who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies. Alleluia, the Lord is risen indeed. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love toward you that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceeds all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We turn to God's word. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 17, beginning with the 16th verse. Now, while Paul was waiting for them at Athens, his spirit was provoked within him, and he saw that the city was full of idols. So he reasoned in the synagogue with the Jews and the devout persons in the marketplace every day with those who happened to be there. Some of the Epicurean and Stoic philosophers also conversed with him. And some said, what does this babbler wish to say? Others said, he seems to be a preacher of foreign divinities because he was preaching Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him to the Aricopus, saying, May we know what this new teaching is that you are presenting? For you bring some strange things to our ears. We wish to know, therefore, what these things mean. Now all the Athanasians and the foreigners who lived there would spend their time in nothing except telling or hearing something new. So Paul, standing in the midst of the Aricopus, said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious. For I passed along and observed the objects of your worship. I found also an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by men, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything since he himself gives all mankind life and breath and everything, and he made from one man every notion of mankind to live on all the face of the earth, having determined allotted periods and the boundaries of their dwelling place, that they should seek God and perhaps seal their way toward him and find him. Yet he is actually not far from each one of us, for in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of you, your own po poets, have said, for we are indeed his offspring. Being then God's offspring, we ought to thank or think that the divine being is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art of the an imita uh, imitation of man. The times of ignorance God overlooked, but now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading comes to us from 1 Peter chapter 3, beginning with the 13th verse. Now who is there to harm you if you are zealous for what is good? But even if you should suffer for righteousness' sake, you will be blessed. Have no fear of them, nor be troubled. But in your hearts honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks you for a reason for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and respect, having a good conscience so that when you are slandered, those who revile your good behavior in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if that should be God's will, than for doing evil. For Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteousness for the unrighteous, 
that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which he went and proclaimed to the spirits in prison, because they formerly did not obey when God's patience waited in the days of Noah while the ark was being prepared, in which a few, that is eight persons, were brought safely through water. Baptism, which corresponds to this, now saves you, not as the removal of dirt from the body, but as the appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers having been subjected to him. This is the word of the Lord. The gospel reading comes to us from John chapter 14, beginning with the 15th verse. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live, you also will live. In that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he it is who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest myself to him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. sermon comes from that gospel reading from John chapter 14, the 18th verse, where it says, I will not leave you as orphans, I will come to you. There's a great story about a little girl who cried out to her mom one night during a terrible thunderstorm. Her mother came running up the stairs to her bedroom in order to comfort her. It's okay, the mother said. 
you're never alone because Jesus is always with you. Yes, I know the little girl said, but I just want a Jesus with skin on. Well, God often seems far away, way at, especially during those times that we are frightened or disappointed or, or um, just heartbroken. Like the child in the story, we want a Jesus with skin on. But Jesus tells us in the gospel reading that he must leave us, at least physically. And so he prepared the disciples for that time. Parenting is about preparing a child for when that parent will no longer be around. In other words, they're called upon to train their, their children with ample life skills so that children might be set free in a God-pleasing, responsible life without having to depend on their parents. If Jesus had decided to remain on earth, he would not have been nearly as helpful as he is now. Can you imagine if you ever wanted to see Jesus, you'd have to buy plane tickets because he probably wouldn't be centered out of, out of uh, uh, Dublin, California, maybe Jerusalem. Maybe you'd have to go to Jerusalem every time that you, that you wanted to talk to him. Can you imagine in the meantime having to be satisfied with only seeing Jesus on the television set and, and having contact uh, with him through an email or hopefully through a phone call, which with all the people in the world would be doubtful you'd ever get through. No, it is to our best interest that Jesus should ascend to the Father, but he promised that he would not leave us as orphans. He would send the Comforter, the Holy Spirit, Having God seem far away is only a matter of perspective. In order to demonstrate this, I'd like to show the two different uh, perspectives. First of all, the Word of God, uh, the world and, and God, I'm sorry, the world and God. When the world centers itself on, on itself, then of course God seems far away. Many people in the world view God as a being who is far away and takes little interest in the world and us as individuals. Some have even referred to this God as a watchmaker God, a God who created everything, set it in motion, wound it up as it were, and then walked away and watched it run. Others in the world won't even acknowledge that God uh, exists. They look for other ways that the world came to be. But when the Holy Spirit is ignored or forsaken, Jesus tells us that the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. The amazing fact is that the scripture, in the scriptures, is that no one can even confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior without the working of the Holy Spirit. Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians 12, therefore I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says Jesus is accursed and no one can say Jesus is Lord except in the Holy Spirit. We also read in Matthew 17 where, P where Jesus said to Peter, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. That's in response to Peter saying, when Jesus said, who do you say that I am? He says, thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. This all because we are sinful and corrupt and actually enemies of God by our sins. Without the Holy Spirit, we could not see God who cared, as a God who cares about us and his creation. Ultimately, God cared enough about each one of us to send his son to be a sacrifice for our sins. This is why the world asks the question, why does God 
seem so far away. I said at the beginning that there are two perspectives, the world and God versus God and the world. The second is that God and the world. It is a perspective that looks at the love of God for the world. Listen again to our text. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. How can we think of God as far away when we look at the, the miracle of Easter and the love of God that sent his only son to the cross? We may wonder sometimes when we think God does not hear us or we think that he does not answer us, that God may be far away from us. Nothing could be further from the truth. Our text reminds us that I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. I believe that if God were ever to leave us, we would be attacked and destroyed instantly by Satan, who would want to come and destroy us and our faith. But Romans 8, 38 and 39 says, For I am sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. In the Lutheran Confessions, something called the Small Called Articles by Martin Luther, we are told of five ways that God is with us. We are first of all, or God is first of all with us through the spoken word, through God's holy scriptures. He is with us through baptism, as each one of us individually have been baptized in the in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. He's with us through Holy Communion, a time to come and receive the very body and blood of Jesus Christ in, with, and under the bread and wine of Holy Communion, a way that God comes and, and is present with us and allows all five of our senses to participate in his presence. He is with us through the Office of the Keys, that is the preaching of God's word, the, the offering of the forgiveness of sins and the confession and absolution through the, the uh, uh, time that we are able to come and, and be a part of worship with our God. He is with us finally through the mutual conversation and consolation of the brethren. As Lutherans, we emphasize the means of grace that is, this is what the small called article speaks of. So God continues to be with each one of us in these five ways. Through the word, through baptism, through holy communion, through the office of the keys. Well, that is four. What about that fifth one, that mutual conversation? That is where Jesus comes to us with skin on. Mutual conversation and consolation of the brethren. The old Jewish uh, proverb said, God could not be everywhere. That is why he created mothers. So we're reminded of this mutual conversation and consolation of the brethren, which is really fellowship. But we're reminded of it on this, this special day that we celebrate mothers. God's presence is through others. He's, he, God is present with us through our pastors, through our friends, through our teachers, through a faithful spouse, through our children. In our epistle reading, we read that um, in 1 Peter 3.15, but your hearts set apart Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have, but do this with gentleness and respect. No, God is not far from us. He is very near. Our first lesson for today from Acts is a good one to remind us that God is always with us. Paul saw in the city of Athens that it was full of idols. Even so, Paul preaches to the Epicureans and the Stoics 
and philosophers and said, Men of Athens, I perceive that in every way you are very religious, for I passed along and observed the objects of your worship. I found also an altar with the inscription, To the unknown God. What therefore you worship as the known, this I proclaim to you, the God who made the world and everything in it, being Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by men, nor in, is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mankind life and breath and everything. So when God seems far away, it is then that we need to confess he is always with us. As he said, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Amen. Now the peace of God, which surpasses all human understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess our Christian faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We turn to God in prayer. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. We pray on this Mother's Day. Father in heaven, you have given us a mirror of your love in the vocation of mothers who nurture, guide, and raise their children in all things good. Bless them in their calling. Sustain them through weary and difficult times. Remember in compassion all who are barren and bring them comfort through the children of your church. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Son of the Father, you promise never to leave us as orphans or alone and you have followed through with that promise. We thank you for coming to be near us, to live and die and rise. And now through the spirit you have sent, may you never be unknown to us. Keep us close to you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our church, O Holy Spirit, source of faith and wisdom, as you once opened the lips of Christ's disciples to proclaim the mighty deeds of God, so open the hearts and lips of all who speak your saving word here in this place and in every part of the world and daily add to the church throughout the world those who are being saved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the call process. We pray for the search committee to not grow weary in their work. We pray for the search committee and the church will be able to see God's hand at work bringing us our future pastor together. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for our country and our leaders. God above, rule, great ruler of all, we work in the hearts and the minds of our national and state leaders so that they may achieve what is best for all citizens and guide the actions of all those who make policies and control legislation so that their efforts will bring solutions to problems and resolutions to conflict. Always keep them aware of the power they have to make change for the better, according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who protect us. Lead those called to serve through positions of, of leadership in the government in order that they, we may live peaceably with all. We pray then for all police officers, for firemen, we pray for, for those in the military and homeland defense, and those in the medical fields, and all those who serve us. Keep them safe as they keep us safe, dear Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are ill and hurting. Gracious Lord, help those who are wrestling with illness and pain. 
May they hear you say, Be still and know that I am God. Quiet them with your love. Soothe them with sweet sounds of loved ones who look after them. Put their fears at ease and reveal to them how much you care. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer. Sharon Hunter, George Mate, Linda Mary Rosier, Marcella Jamello, Brenda Garcia, Jeff Govert, Roland Langboya, Casey Buddy, Lori Check, Debbie Church, Jacqueline Benson, Tracy Gonzalez, Christy, Bob Ruder, Mark and Cindy Hall, Lori D. Lamott, Shirlene uh, S., Baby Asher, Denise Ackley, Ken Herman, and Marlene Diggins. We pray for those who are uh, have other health issues. George Pickett, Andrea Green, Lois Chick, Kathy Williams, Eunice Sterling, Ernie Louis, Sandy Green, Ron Green, Marcel Francisco, Sandra Boyd, Lori Diaggs and Lori Parrish, Sharon Maxwell, Tom C., Pat Galt, Karen Berry, Majino Duke, Chris Sandoval, Barbara Guys, Mark Scissor, Betty Pickett, Lois Belmezuri, Len Herrero, Kathy Harrington, Linda Hudson, Debbie Piriaski, Dave Hudson, Amy Chow, Sam Lamb, Mary Ann Danabar, Heather Tuzzi, Sue Cromer, Bob Geis, Kimberly Murphy, Bob Sampson, Darlene Nash, Do Doris, Dick Fisher, Dan Foster, Carl Swan, Ann Colbert, Bob McDowell, Doreen Palmese, and Jim Hamilton. Grant each one of them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in trouble, and the sure hope of everlasting life. Abide also with, with all those who are unemployed and distraught. Return them to health and livelihood. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for family and friends who have lost loved ones. Eternal God, thanks be to you for victory over death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, remember all who mourn. Comfort them with the promise that you love them with an everlasting love and will raise them and all your people from the dead. We pray for then the family of Bob Maru, for the family of Justin Maru, the family of Mike Hansen, the family of Tim Horrigan, and the family of Pastor Spees. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. These and all other prayers we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now the benediction. God gives peace. He brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, who by his blood made an eternal covenant to be the great shepherd of the sheep. May God make you complete in everything good, so that you may do his will, working in us what is pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ. Amen. We sing our closing song.
you go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God and have a great week in the Lord. Amen. <laughs>